Nice to have you with us. Well, this video is going to be a little bit different. Today, I'm going to relive my past as a tattooed teenage alien fighter from Beverly Hills. About a week ago, I got an email from someone who has a podcast called Sharks Across Hollywood, and they talk about movies and stuff, but every year, apparently, they do Power Rangers Month. And this year, they wanted to focus on some of the, we won't call them ripoffs, but copycat shows of the Power Rangers, of which Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters was one, and of which I was one of the four stars. So uh, that was 25 years ago, so it's been a while, but I thought, why not? Could be fun. I already told them I probably won't remember a whole lot as far as plot lines and monsters, because they may have recently watched them, but it, it's not like I watch the show on a regular basis, or at all. It'll be fun to talk about. We'll see. Time to click the Zoom link clicking the link. This is stupid to be so nervous. Hi, I'm Jill, as you figured out. I'm Gabe. You're Gabe, okay. I'm Andrew. And you guys are rocking the beards. Yes, we, we definitely okay. have those. <laughs> I, I have to ask, have you always had the beards or are these like quarantine? Andrew, you at least had yours a long time. Like, did you go like, screw it, it's uh, quarantine, I'm never shaving again? I used to work at restaurants like a bunch and I always had to shave and I swore that uh, when I got out of it, I would n never shave, but now I kind of want to. So my girlfriend won't let me shave because the kids and the dogs will not like it. I shaved once when I, after I got my chihuahua and he didn't recognize me for like two days. He just barked. I grew, up with, I grew up with basically like a cowboy mountain man for a dad. So okay. beards were always a part of my life. My ex-wife hated my beard. <laughs> so for 15 years, no beard. And wow. then af after after the split, um, I was like, you know what? Forget that. I'm gr I'm wearing a beard for the rest of my life. I'm never shaving again. You have no idea how exciting this is. Like I, part of me wants to just play it cool and be like, oh yeah, we do this all the time. But yeah. you are our first. You are our first. Well, guest really of any kind, but especially someone who's actually in something we're discussing. Uh, so this is super cool for us. Yep. We are I kept I kept excited. bragging. I'm like, you know, guys, I'm nervous. She's she's like super famous. So <laughs> okay, well, As, yeah, okay. She was she was <laughs> on Saved sweet. by the Bell. I told everybody, I'm like, she was on Saved by the Bell once, and yeah, do you know that is the one show I still get residuals from? That and Weird Science. I was like, you know, Tattoo Teens. I was on for like 40 episodes. <laughs> Not a dime. And Saved by the Bell, every once in a while I get like my 12 cent check. So that's kind of cool. That's funny. I was actually going to ask about that too. <laughs> so that, that covers telling, that one. Are you yeah. telling me you got nothing from my DVD set at all? No. I'm broken hearted. I know. Thank you though. No, I got nothing from my DVD set either. That cheap one that like they just 
cram the DVDs in together. They're not yeah, even separated. Just stacked <laughs> but, in there, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Thank I, yeah. I know when I saw that they were on um, Amazon, somebody told me, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to buy those because, one, then at least I have them, right? But um, but I thought, does this mean I'm going to, like, start getting some money from them or something? <laughs> and, um, of course, they're not going to just offer it. I actually called the union, and I was like, so... This show I was on in the '90s, I just there's DVDs out now, and is there any way I can revisit that contract? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's so far back, and like before things were digital, so they had no record of the contract, so I had to provide it. And of course, I had no record of the contract because you know I've moved a gazillion times, and you don't think you need that. And my agents, you know, probably dead by now. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. It's just I was like, all right, it's not worth it for like the three dollars I'll get. But it's kind of a bummer. Oh, the the second I awesome. saw that it existed, I'm like, I have to have that. I'm gonna show the kids, and they loved it to death. And I'm like, yes, that's You're, really yeah. They're seven. Yeah. They're both seven. Well, so. they're the right age. Yeah. That's that's how old yeah. I was when it came out. So yeah. Wow. Oh, you're such a youngster. And then I'll bring up California Dreams, which oh, yeah. I will. And he's like, I, I've never heard of that before. Now, you know I was on that one too, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I watched I watched that episode. Okay. I was like some opera, like, oh. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I'm like, hey, there she yeah. is. And she sc- you scream, yeah. and then you run out because you get annoyed uh-huh. with everybody. It was, it yeah, was, it was fun. like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was good yeah. stuff. I did read a little bit of a couple interviews, and I have checked out your IMDb because I'm a fan. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, so you, you're a mom and a wife and a teacher and all that, but you used to be a superhero. Yeah. And I don't know which one of those is cooler, but for my purposes here, the superhero thing is definitely the best thing ever. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go with that. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of that. The tokusatsu thing in general, which is why we're doing what we're doing now, the Power Rangers month thing. But let's okay. start with something easy. I'm really curious, especially back then, working with Deke, and I I watched a thousand Deke shows just all, all the time when I was a kid. Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad was the other one, and uh-huh. we, <laughs> we did that one last week. Uh, what I want to know is what was the audition process like for this? How did you figure out about this? Like what, what, what possessed you to go, Hey, that sounds like something that I need to get involved in. Well, okay. First you have to realize that I was an actress and we just want to work. So, um, you just you get an audition and you go, okay, I'll go. What, what's the name of that one again? Wait, I need a bigger piece of paper. Cause that one was too small. Um, and actually the the description for my character for drew um they likened it to the winona writer character on heathers so they wanted kind of that Ooh. edge and so i remember i hadn't watched that movie so we went out probably to blockbuster and waited in line and got our little vhs and rented heathers and um yeah, and I was just excited because usually I would have been more likely to go out for like the peppy cheerleader kind of characters, just because that's, you know, I'm like girl next door friendly kind of thing. <laughs> that was the draw for me to be like the edgy one. And I, I still don't really know why I was cast, <laughs> but um, probably just because they got Leslie and she was a brunette. And they're like, oh, all right, just go with the blonde. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, so I remember, let's see, it was the 90s, so I was kind of grungy. I wore like hiking boots and this like knit kind of t-shirt dress with the flannel tied around my waist, you know, and just kind of went in there. And I remember telling myself, don't smile so much because that's like my natural tendency. And I thought I probably shouldn't be so friendly. (laughs) So um, yeah, so auditioned and then, oh, there were probably a couple callbacks you know and then i just remember um being surprised when i got it because you're always like you want the job but you're always surprised when you actually get cast at least i was It'd be like wait wait, really because you get so much rejection and so many like it was down to you and somebody else and it wasn't you so um (laughs) so it was tattoo teenage alien fighters from beverly hills right so um 
there's that excitement of like, wow, I got a job, I'm a working actress, I'm on a series. How awesome is that? But no, it's not it's not friends and it's not, you know, <laughs> you've been saved by the bell or you know, it's so there was a lot of like, what? What's what's the show you're on? Wow, okay. Well, great. So anyway, that was kind of the process. It's it's yeah. just it's a it's a weird little show cuz Power Rangers was a big thing and they're just like we're going to we're going to try that over here. We like to sometimes go, well, you know, I think we're better than Power Rangers cuz our storylines like talk about the characters and you know, we didn't get along. And I think there's some validity to that, but I think we also kind of um you know, made stuff up to be like, no, no, we're still good. We're still fine. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, it was a while before we sort of saw the full thing. So all we saw was the, you know, the normal people stuff. So, well, other than Nimbar's cave. But we saw, like, the coffee shop and, like, Drew's house and school and the cave. But we never actually saw the fight scenes because that was filmed on a different set. So, um so you don't, and then of course you don't see all those amazing um, special effects until, <laughs> you know, afterwards. And so you don't really have a, an idea of like what the cohesive whole is going to be mm-hmm. until, you know, you're already in it. And like we all knew we weren't filming Shakespeare, but it's not <laughs> like, you know, you're going to hang your head in shame and go, oh my God, I did that. We're just like, hey, <laughs> it's a job. Let's keep going. You're getting paid and at yeah. least you're having fun. We were, you know, it was super fun, and it was it was nice people. Like, as, like the creators were super nice. We called them the two Jims, Jim Fisher and Jim Stahl. And um, the directors were all, I mean, everybody was nice, and the four of us got along well. Did you see the entire script, or did you just see the segments of the script that related directly to, like, the scenes you were in? I mean, I guess there was dialogue and stuff that you needed to voice over for some right. of those action sequences so you 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 saw the whole script right yeah 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 we saw the whole script so like we knew okay. it was going on you know mm-hmm. as much as you can and i probably knew more than than i did like i you know now i'm like what monster was what i don't know i haven't seen it in <laughs> so long but i'm sure back then i was like oh cool uh the regulus back or whoever the monster was of the week or the day um so yeah, we saw the whole script. We knew what was going on. And we, yeah, we did do those voiceover sessions where you're like, oh, oh, watch out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all that good stuff. So that brings me to uh, another question. Did anybody explain to you, or did the question even arise, and you may or may not remember this, <laughs> of why you keep referring to the last time you fought a monster, even in the very first episode? <laughs> you know, um, I don't recall that we said that in the first episode, but I would probably say there's a hole in the writing, obviously, somewhere. <laughs> I was just wondering if it got addressed because it, the first time I watched it, I was like, wait, last time? This is their first fight. This is the first time they've ever been in Nimbar's cave, as far as I could tell. Um, Do we really it, say that in the first episode? I could be mistaken. I could be misremembering just because the it was fourth the fourth episode, episode or is the first time I noticed it. The fourth episode, and I think that's the one with the with the weird, <laughs> with the weird uh, garbage monster where you talk about how it smells like Seattle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's there's some truth to that in parts of Seattle. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's okay, weird. so um, inconsistency of the writing. What else would you like to talk about? I was also wondering uh, if you had any input into your character in, uh, you know, dial- maybe dialogue, maybe just talking to the writers and saying, well, you know, I feel like maybe Drew would do this, maybe Drew would do that. Uh, did you have any input on that level? Uh, not before the scripts came out. Um no, and they were cranking them out. I mean, we filmed five five episodes a week. Wow! So it wasn't wow. like this thought filled, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh well, in two weeks we're thinking of doing an episode like this. Like they probably had quite a lot of them, like twenty of them written easily before we even started shooting, if not oh, okay. all of them. Back to that, like five episodes a week. So that's a lot of memorization, and so <laughs> you know we're basically filming rehearsals right <laughs> because <laughs> you, you get your script so you do a table read on monday of like all of the shows for the week and then that was monday morning and then monday afternoon we do the voiceovers for the week 
And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, each day we'd film an episode in a quarter. So, um, wow. so just Power keeping drum. track of that and then keeping, you know, being able to like, I'm just trying to memorize the next scene, you know? And so once in a while, you know, by the end, you pretty much know what your characters are going to say and you can kind mm -hmm. of flub it through, but there wasn't a lot of that. I remember, I mean, there, I'm sure it was, I'm sure the actress that I was, was like, Hmm, <laughs> I'm thinking with this monster, she might've wanted to do this, but, um, but I can't recall anything specific, you know, that's fair or anything. I major. Mean, <laughs> yeah. It's been a few weeks since your last film. So I understand just, that. Uh... <laughs> just a few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So about that dialogue thing, I uh -huh. there th this one's big for Gabe and I, both of us, I think. The word hinky shows up at least once in every yes. episode. Now, whose idea was that? You're kind of rolling your eyes. I see it. Yeah. Uh, was that was that something you came up with, or did they say no. you need a catchphrase? So we're gonna give you this one. I think one of the gems that was like his, you know, from kind of his era, you know. Um, I think that's where that came from. And so it was just a Drew thing. It was not a, a word I was familiar with. I just went with it. It sure. obviously didn't catch on. No. <laughs> now I'm, I've been watching the show so much lately that I'm just like, I'm going to start saying this. Not on purpose. It's just going to come out of hey, me. Maybe you could bring it back. <laughs> I want a I hinky but... a hinky uh, compilation. Just every oh every time you said it. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. It's that's, a super cut. That'd yes, that'd be yeah. awesome. Okay, put that out there for someone to do. <laughs> I do. I do have to ask. Since you said it was, it was one of the gyms things. Um, did one of them have a background in law enforcement? Oh, I don't <laughs> think so. I think they were both like from, like writers and did like Second City Chicago and that kind of stuff. Why? What? What brings that question? Well, uh, it's because the only other place I've heard the word hinky and with some regularity is in the writings of Michael Connolly. Are you familiar with him? I am. I don't read his stuff, but I'm familiar with who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he writes a lot of detective fiction based in Los Angeles, and uh, he uses the word hinky, and he introduces <laughs> it very early on in his uh, Harry Bosch series as being a phrase that L.A. detectives use to oh. describe uh, situations that uh, that look suspect. I had never heard that. That's interesting. Um. So yeah, and you know, so I'm like, oh, I wonder if maybe one of those one of the writers came out of uh, law enforcement or or had a background there. Yeah. <laughs> Even so, I don't I don't think it's still used in law enforcement that I'm aware of. My that husband's is... in law enforcement, and <laughs> yeah. the word has never come up. <laughs> is he is he a, a hard boiled detective though? He's not a hard boiled detective. So you know, maybe if he were, <laughs> maybe that would make all the difference. Did you have any interaction with the American gladiators who played uh, the Sentinel versions of you guys? Awesome. That was my question. Thank you. <laughs> we got to meet them once. So um, yeah, so we had you know heard who they were, and we were mm -hmm. like, hey, that's cool. Um, but yeah, we got to meet them once, and uh, it was like halfway through the shooting, and they came over late uh after shooting one day and we got to meet them and interact with them a little bit but that was literally it that was the only time some of them were matched up well um i always hated that wig that they put <laughs> centaur in <laughs> so bad fact, i was wondering how you felt about that <laughs> yeah yeah okay we look <laughs> nothing alike i mean like the wig is different i'm obviously more muscular I don't know how many cup sizes I've grown when I become centaur. <laughs> and I literally like would still have some people say, wow, I didn't realize you were so buff. Like, or how did you learn to do that stuff? So I'm like, are, are you kidding me? And they were, they were serious. And I'd have to like kindly go, oh, well, that's my stunt double. double. But you know, in your head, you're going, what the heck? That's so obviously not me. As a seven-year-old, I couldn't tell the difference. Oh my. <laughs> Okay. Well, and I got to remember that's the target audience. So, did you ever did you ever get to hang out with Glenn Shaddix who did the did the voice of Nimbar? No, oh, I did not get to hang oh, out with man. him and I was actually more excited about um who was the guy who was the voice of Lecter? 
was oh. Squiggy on Lenny and Shirt. Yes. Me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, but yeah, Squiggy from Laverne yeah. and Shirley. So I was more excited about him because huh? I'd gone a long time ago with a friend and a, her mom or whatever to watch a taping of Laverne and Shirley. So I was oh, like, cool. oh, Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> and I remember once, um, maybe a couple times actually, going to the voiceover studio to do our, our recordings and he had obviously just been finishing his because he was coming down the stairs and you know didn't care at all who we were but you know i was like hi <laughs> you know, that's like the most i ever said to him so. i want to imagine that he still had the hairdo and the leather jacket <laughs> i know he didn't but i want to imagine that that's what it was like when he's passing you in the hallway well you know since i don't remember i'll just say that's exactly how it was i knew it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I just learned that fact like yesterday I, I've i been preparing a lot I, I've watched like a million YouTube videos about the show how gross was Nimbar in real life because every time I watch that first episode that hand comes out of that little blob <laughs> and it's just slimy yeah. and he's sm wiping all that slimy stuff on you and that's your tattoo and just, yeah <laughs> like our faces I think are like and that was pretty like that wasn't really acting because it was pretty gross <laughs> and it was just him Nimbar himself was actually I mean he was covered with like a silicone but um you know he was kind of hard underneath so like touching him didn't feel really like anything but when they decided he had to have his hands which a couple <laughs> episodes like can hand something whatever they get one of the PAs to come in and like stick on a glove and goop up the hand and then yeah that was like really Real, I don't know what they use, but it was really goopy stuff. Like <laughs> snot. Like yeah. snot in a bucket. That slimy stuff. It always grosses me out. Even my kids are like, they scream just, ew, at the TV <laughs> every time they see it. Oh, well, good. It's but, fun. You know, we're getting them engaged. <laughs> yeah, they, they like it a lot. They talked about it. Let's watch Tattooed Teenagers. And I'm like, what? Oh, that show. I, right. I can't I, hear you. <laughs> <laughs> all day long. We you have to say the whole yeah. title. Well, that's what they yeah. that, that they said it. Yeah, I know. We watched like twenty episodes together, just like oh, over the course word. of a few days. <laughs> I think that's more than my own children ever watched. Ha have you? <laughs> how much have you actually watched of the show? Uh, I have none. Really, you know, I thought when I got I thought when I got the DVD that it'd be fun to like watch the whole thing, and it's not. <laughs> um, even if it was great, right? Great entertainment i think actors don't like to watch themselves i mean okay i never thought the show was good but i still thought you know well for what it was my acting was good yeah so that's painful to watch and then um yeah and then it's just cheesy and then if you're watching with anybody else in the room there's just a little bit of this going on you know <laughs> so um yeah, I mean, it was it, it was a great time in my life, and it was a, a working gig for an actor, and it was fun to do and fun people, but, you know, I don't need to watch all 40 episodes again. Oh, well, man. And here's the That's... other problem is whenever <laughs> my kids would, like, every once in a while they'd be like, you know, somebody would find out or they'd tell somebody, oh, yeah, my mom's on this show. And once in a blue moon there'd be somebody who'd, like, care and be like, oh, <laughs> that's cool, I want to see it. Well, my kids always felt like, well, they should watch the first episode so they understand what's going on. <laughs> so, you know, after a while, you don't need to watch that first episode again. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, I probably should pick a random one and just watch that. You know, those reaction videos are kind of big mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I should watch myself watching one of the episodes, like one that I haven't watched <laughs> since I filmed it and just but it's kind of terrifying to think of because I think it would be so cringeworthy. Well, if you do, please send us. Uh, yes. Please send us a link because I want to see okay. it. I definitely want to <laughs> okay. want to watch your reaction video. Yeah, I'm, I'm not willing. I'm not sure I want to be that vulnerable. <laughs> let me say. Let me say for the record, okay. Um, I watched 21 episodes. I tried. I wanted to watch all 40 of them before <laughs> we had this interview, but I watched. I got through 21 episodes and. Uh, you are easily the best actor on the show. Like seriously, I I was watching, really analyzing during those last ten or so, and uh, yes, your your definitely your performance is definitely a, a couple of steps above the rest, and not just on the show as uh, a lot of other uh, 
Mighty Morphin Power Ranger uh, knockoff and wannabe and and spin off and and adjacent <laughs> shows as well. Uh, so your your heads and tails above a huge chunk of those. It's true. I was just going to well, say the same thing. You're very kind. Like I can't. I, I think. I think you were biased because you know I was coming on here, so you were determined to like me, and I thank you so much. That's very <laughs> sweet of you. <laughs> no, we're my my goal now is to have the other three on the show. And we're yeah, gonna tell well, we're gonna tell should. them the same thing. We're gonna say Jill was better than you. <laughs> I, oh, you are. Oh well, yep. I'd like to hear that. No, I expect you to be like, yeah, we watched it, and Rug, you were better than all of them. And then we watched it, <laughs> Leslie. You, you were better than all of them. <laughs> I now I want okay. now I want to do that. Now I want to <laughs> yeah. do that just to have. We'll it. do it. Uh, Rug might be hard to get, considering that he's still working and he's like in things. <laughs> I know. He's he, yeah, he's he's busy. I ch- I checked out his IMDb. He's he's still going. I haven't like, wow. I haven't seen what he's doing lately, but a couple years ago I saw he was doing also doing like some kind of like helping kids get into it or training or teaching. I'm not sure what. And yeah. then Leslie, so um when my girls were younger, uh, you know, Mary Kate and Ashley, the Olsen yep. twins, they did like a bunch <laughs> of movies and stuff, and they had one, I think it was like set in Paris or something. And she was in it. I was like, so I'm watching with my daughters going, oh, my gosh, look at that. And, you know, I was a little envious because she got to actually film in Paris, it looks like. So that was kind of mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Nice. Oh, well, yeah. And I don't know Paris. what Richard's doing. Paris, you're, that's actually another thing. I did. I bought your book. Oh, the <laughs> what, uh, two-room flat in yeah. London? Yeah. Yeah. I oh, tried. I, That's so sweet. <laughs> I'm an audiobook guy. I tried to find an audio. Apparently, there's not an audiobook of it. No, but you know what? That's one of my goals for 2021 is to uh, record the audiobook for that. Well, if you so. do, again, send me a link because I'm a, I'm an audiobook guy and I w- I want to read it. So really, well, that I do. That's very okay. Yeah, and I I, I like to read. I, li- I like the page and stuff. But yeah, so he'll I'm do the audiobook. I got the read. I got the print. So thank you, thank you for supporting yeah. my writing. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're you've done you've done some cool things and. So you don't you don't have any like contact with any of the, any of the other three really. And- no, I don't. It's funny because um, those who've gone on to do more acting probably have other things they're going to feature on their resume. And <laughs> oh, so maybe, be like, maybe. hey, remember me? I was on that show with you. They'll probably be like, oh, yeah, um, no, I don't remember. <laughs> you know. So um, I don't know. I don't know if they get care, but maybe they would. Maybe they think it was just cool because, you know, it was a a sort of time in our lives. Actually, it might be fun to like, okay, I don't know if this would be fun or if this would be a little <laughs> pathetic to like go to one of those Comic Cons, you know? <laughs> it's like. Oh, yeah. You know, no, I was going to ask, like, have you ever, you've never been like approached to go to a Power, power Morphicon or anything like that? No. Because. Remember, because we, we weren't the Power Rangers. I know, we were but. the knockoff. But then so. I was thinking, like, I, would they have, would they have all the Deke shows there? Would, would, would Matthew Lawrence yeah. show up? Because oh, he was Servo. Okay, so <laughs> that reminds me, thinking of all the Deke shows. So I, um, I'm a journaler and I thought, surely I have a journal from like 1994, but I couldn't find it. Oh. But I found <laughs> some other gold <laughs> that I, I pulled out of like musty old bins to show you guys. And I haven't gone through it, but I. There was, where was this? Okay. Oh, I saw the logo. Can you see that? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. So, Hollywood Reporter from, let's see, 1994, October 4th, 1994, and MIPCOM was coming, and Tattoo Teens was going to be in booth 3.2. Apparently, we didn't warrant our uh, our own booth, <laughs> but we could have point two of a booth. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So I, I pulled that out to share with you. And then there was this thing. This, I think, was a publicity. So this was like a folder that would have, like, publicity stuff in it, you know? Oh, nice. And <laughs> I know. Look at let me, where am I? Here I am. Look at you see the similarity? It's just like me. Yeah, it does. It really does. I, I really couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> no, no. Of course that not. Happen. Oh, do you recognize our, oh, is this that, is our most famous guest? I, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah, she shows Zsa up in the Zsa show. Zsa Gabor. <laughs> I know. So, and here's a picture of all of us with Zsa Zsa. 
you see that? <laughs> That's cool. awesome. Yes. I just remember. Um, so she she could see this dress she's wearing, and she was like uh-huh. spilling out of this totally tight dress. <laughs> but I just remember Leslie and I were like, we hope when we are her age, we can rock a dress like that because that was. I mean, and she was just like, I don't know how old she was. She was plenty old, but she acted like she was 25 and it was right after like she have you guys seen that episode or was it not the first 21 i have seen the episode i i have like a glitch and she becomes the mayor of of beverly hills or something i remember her behind a podium i don't remember what the episode was about though yeah so she was like mayor so it was like this alternate reality and she was mayor of beverly hills and they kind of just gave her a general thing like they weren't going to give her a monologue to memorize or if they did she didn't bother and so um (laughs) she just kind of ad-libbed the thing and it was not that long like the most recent thing she'd been in the news for had been um she like hit an off a police officer in Beverly Hills or like slap somebody. So I she actually that. referred to that like in the thing. She's like, oh, if they give you any trouble, just slap them around a little bit. And I just remember her like, this is a kid's show. Should she be saying that? As the mayor of Beverly Hills, I promised you we're going to slap a police a little bit around. <laughs> the kids well, aren't going to get it. That's for the parents. Well, that, well that's true. Yeah. That's true. So anyway, that was fun. She was our big celebrity. So I haven't listened to a whole lot of you guys' podcasts, but I did hear August 10th when you were uh, saying ahead that you were going to be talking about the Deke shows coming up. And I believe what I picked up was something like, and one is pretty good, and one is pretty terrible. And I'm just I'm just curious where, you know, <laughs> which fell into which in, camp. In the best way possible. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you the one that I thought was, oh, th- th- this one's like the better show, kind of, was way less fun than watching Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters. So that it's it's just such a weird little time capsule of the early 90s and all the Power Rangers, like, <laughs> copycats that are going on. And there there's so crazy. many. And yours I, is the best, for sure. I got to say. <laughs> I'm not going to say I think yours is the best. From a technical perspective, it's awful. <laughs> like let's not pr- let's not pretend. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. The but best, my favorite. This. Let's say <laughs> I will say this. It is easily the most fun to watch. Yes. Yeah. Like I just had so much fun even before even before I had any contact with you and knew you were coming on the show. I watched those first ten episodes before I sent you that email, and uh, I I just loved it. I was having so much fun watching it. I got my 14 year old son who is the only one of my kids who's young enough to actually watch something like that with me. He's like, he doesn't understand that, that he's too cool for things like that yet, you know, so he'll still oh, watch these sweet. shows with me and he watched it with me and he loved it. Like we just had a great time watching it. It's just a bucket of fun. Technically not a good show, but yeah. so much fun. It's so much fun to watch. The first episode was the sorcerer, right? Um, no, the, that, that was robo ninja. Oh, that's right. It was Robo Ninja. Okay. Yeah. But in the very first episode, he's there. He's destroying buildings. He's destroying telephone poles. He is not destroying which... buildings. He is destroying mountains and rocks and maybe a oh. telephone pole. <laughs> maybe I'm that thinking of. That is threatening. <laughs> maybe I'm thinking of the Sorcerer episode. The then, fourth the episode is the one, where you, the one where they switch bodies. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm just thinking of the one. Th- there were all those round buildings, the round top buildings, you know. At, there's just a, a bunch of them. All the buildings have that really rough cityscape <laughs> round tops. And huh. so he's whichever monster it was, they're blowing up the round top buildings and they're blowing up the telephone poles. The telephone poles always throws me for some reason. <laughs> Why telephone poles? But apparently monsters love blowing up telephone poles. It was and, the communication, right? Yeah. Like nowadays that, they take down the internet. Then it was the telephone poles. Maybe that's a fair point. I had not considered so, I have to say, uh, you've opened my eyes on that one. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Do you remember the episode where you guys all switched bodies? Because yes. who did you switched who was with? I? You were you were Gordon? Swinton. You were Swinton. Oh, I was Swinton. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was super <laughs> yeah. fun. I enjoyed being Swinton. Like, yeah, my glasses back up and yeah, yeah. That was that was entertaining watching you all kind of act as each other. I don't Here. think Swinton ever said Hinky though. 
He never got to say that line. No, and he should have. He should have. That was like my signature line. That really bothered me, and it, I've been thinking yeah. about it all day. Because well. that's what I do when I... <laughs> <laughs> when you've got nothing else to think about it it, it yeah. bothered me i'm sorry that let you down <laughs> but you so did a good did job you playing him about our, our our crossover episode where we had um the superhuman samurai cyber squad guy oh come my over. are you did serious you like i missed that episode too i that haven't made it that far yet apparently I wow oh. i haven't found it i do okay. know that the guy who played tanker his name yeah. escapes me right now he showed up as the Kevin, fifth sentinel Kevin castro uh, yeah. Yeah, thank yes. you. He showed up as the fifth sentinel and you know, you think it's gonna be like a Green Ranger thing, but he's like, Nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal was he was he trying to steal was he trying to take you with him? Or was it was it Lori? I can't remember. No, it was We had yeah, no we true. had a thing. We had a little romance going on. Yeah. But I don't I don't think he was trying to take me anywhere. He was trying was to he? convince you to go with yeah, him. Yeah, he was he was trying <laughs> to convince you to ditch an Imbar like Just head fly head off with him, with him into the into the portals around the galaxy, yeah. I mean, he's a good-looking guy. It would have been hard to say no, I know. That's fair. Yeah. But Drew was strong, and she said no. See ya. See ya. Yeah, she was, she she was. was way too cool for that kind of stuff. Yeah. She is my favorite character <laughs> in the show. I really like Gordon Same. and all his weird nonsense. Just him. He thinks he's really cool, but he would totally be the kid who got beat up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody would beat up Swinton because he would help them with their homework. Gordon right. would get get hurt a lot. Right. That's why Plus, he always has to have money in his wallet yeah, so he can yeah. pay people up. Good point. Yeah. Plus, Swinton's got that whole thing where he uh, he backed the bully down. So, you know, that has to help his school cred at some point. Right. Right. Yeah. Swinton was a cool guy. Yeah. As was Rug, who played him. Well, that that's nice to hear. I like people that I yeah. that I watched when I was a kid. I'm glad to hear they're not jerks. That's always that always makes me happy. I probably tried to play tattoo teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills. I had to say the whole name at least once, oh, like on the playground, and everybody's like, "What is that?" <laughs> well, if they had to be able to like cartwheel and do those split jumps to really do it effectively, yeah, that was so maybe maybe that was too challenging. They were just like, "Nope, I've never heard of the show. I guess I'm just not gonna not gonna do that." <laughs> Yeah, at least we filmed our own action footage, right? Well, yeah, that's actually that's you know? the part of the show that actually kind of sets it apart a lot because there's no there's I, no yeah. I was wondering if they had because it almost seems like they were trying to do a reverse Sentai there, where they were like, you know what, we'll do, we'll make this show <laughs> and we'll keep these two things separate, just like they do in the Sentai shows and then we can send it over to them and they'll be the ones who have to use our footage oh well that would have been a good strategy maybe except who then knows? they would have looked at the at the footage and been like what why would we use what? that what? look at what we have <laughs> what makes you think that's better than what we have good to dream big you know yeah why not yeah. right yeah so um so one thing that Again, in hindsight, watching it, and probably we thought that there. Like, don't you ever wonder why don't they just start with Nitron? Because every you know, they, single oh, time, every because single time, I Nimbar that. says it there. He says Nitron has limited power, so you have to use him sparingly. Right, but they, they go to him every time. Like they're know. never able to like solve it without him. Let's try Nitron again. Apollo, Taurus, Tell us, my question yeah. my question was why oh his name's escaping me the big bad G uh, uh, Gor Gorganus thank you Gorganus. Man, I couldn't even why Gorganus <laughs> didn't just throw two monsters at him because they always barely get by <laughs> defeating one monster why well, not see, he, double up? He was obviously not that smart. Apparently not. Maybe he. Yeah. Maybe there is an excuse. Downfall. Is there an excuse somewhere where he can't? He can't send more than one because he won't be able to control them. Possibly, or like they had to fit on that thing. You know, he put the little model on there, and then he go. Rah, and then um, yeah. send them. He didn't maybe upgrade to the double bit. yet. <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> Story wise, with just the four main actors, I'm like, wow, this is they're actually like doing stuff and there's pop culture references never once was yeah. there a pop culture reference in any power ranger show that i ever watched but it's also 
90s pop culture references so i'm laughing because there's just so much so much weird stuff i'm like who nobody would understand that unless they're in their 30s at least uh was there ever any merchandise for the show that you were aware of funny you mention it oh cool um several years ago um for my birthday a girlfriend uh said hey so i found this thing on ebay and i just had to get it for you and it's a thermos have you seen oh, this before? Oh, nice. The awesome. That, Look at that is cool. There I am. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We've got I love all of us. Actually, look at Swint looks pretty good. Can you? There we go. Dang. Yeah. He so does. I have the thermos. And then my niece found it on eBay and she's like, Auntie Kajo, look what I found. And she got me the lunchbox. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. I do it's have a vague beautiful. memory of actually seeing that in a store once. Oh, really? Yes. That's fun. But you know, yeah, it would be cool to have a little doll, though. Yeah, you know, I I wish little, little purple centaur. That'd be cool. Anyways, do you have any more questions, dude? Because I, I I I'm out. I think I just have I just have one. Um, do you have a favorite monster? Yes. <laughs> oh gosh, I should have done my research on the monsters before, so I could remember them all. Okay, you've been watching them, so you name them for me and and spark my memory oh i'm terrible with names I, I i just remember shapes and faces you know like okay. there's the big there's the brain dude there's the sorcerer oh, the brain dude, okay there's uh <laughs> there's the cobra uh, he he had a very snake related name or she i i guess it was a it was a mother because there's that whole there's that whole story arc about her nesting uh wanting Ooh. to nest on earth um there's the garbage, the toxic waste monster. Right. Um, There's that ISIS, like ice queen kind of person, right? Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The the ice, the ice, ice queen. Yeah, like you, I have you the list on Wikipedia. I, I I pulled it up. Oh okay. So there's okay, okay. Ninja Bot, Neregula. That's the brain monster. Okay. The sorcerer. That's the one with the metal mask. Voldeck, oh, okay. an electrical nightlike monster that could produce static electricity. Oh yeah, Slagar, the toxic waste monster. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one that smells like he, Seattle. Is he the one that's like all like this? <laughs> yep. Is that yeah. Him? Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Octodroid. It's an octopus themed monster. I think I really liked that one. That one was kind of cool. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about him too. Isolus, a four eyed female ice elemental monster. Okay. Cool that's the ice queen. Culebra, a cobra form monster who can breathe heat. Predoraptor, which that's pretty pretty obvious, a dinosaur thing. And then Snake Trooper. And I don't think I made it to Snake Trooper. <laughs> um, you might have. They they reuse a bunch of the monsters, that's that's it, over the course of forty episodes. Right, right. They come back because we don't fully defeat them. Tragically. Right. right. Yeah. Um, favorite monster. I think I'm going to have to go with the toxic waste guy just because, you know, <laughs> why not? He's so nasty. Although at like this point in my, in my life, if I put thought into it, I think I'd have to go with that snake one. You said she's the mother who wanted to nest. Like I could yeah. probably relate to her <laughs> now. Okay. Yeah, but, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. But if you just go with like, okay, what's a funny monster? I think because I, re I actually remember the toxic waste one so i must have you know had an affinity for him somehow <laughs> it had a unique aspect that really separated it from the rest of the monsters because he's got that like the head is below his shoulders yeah so, like it yeah th there was a very unique aspect to that one it was and it was pretty gross looking too <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah some of the costumes huh. were pretty cool i i, I like that that gross garbage monster mostly because yeah. of that seattle joke i just thought it was real funny <laughs> For some reason, it just it just made me happy. I don't know because <laughs> I live so close. Maybe <laughs> I love yeah. this show. It's ridiculous and dumb, and it's so fun. You just gotta. It is pretty fun. fun, and I don't think anybody like putting it together was like, "Hey, let's make something really crappy." <laughs> you know, I I think it was more like, okay, there was the probably, hey, <clears throat> we can make money off of something that's a Power Rangers, you know, rip off. Naturally, but, <clears throat> yeah. I think you kind of go, okay. Well, this is what I have to work with, you know, and this is the budget I have to work with, and you know, we'll do the best show we can with these constraints. At least it was, you know, <clears throat> terrible with the best intent. Maybe. Well, it's 
it's delightfully fun to watch. So whatever whatever budgetary constraints there were, it didn't take away from the fun factor in the least. I had so much fun watching this. I am definitely going to finish watching the entire series. Uh, really? Because yeah. you don't have to. The interview's no. over. <laughs> I no, I'm I'm in, I watched this because I enjoyed it. I was looking forward to this. When he gave me those DVDs, I was so excited, but I couldn't get my kids to watch it with me. You know, so my kids I my my oldest is twenty one years old and my daughter's nineteen and so you know they're way too cool for anything <laughs> like that and then the 14 year old when i pitched him on it he was like eh, i don't know about that i don't know about that but then i was like look i have to watch this you're here with me <laughs> just sit down and give it a, give it an episode and the next thing you know you know we're powering through three four five of them and he's having the time of his life so so what I, was most fun for him like seeing like aside from my stellar acting and the storyline but i mean like was it fun because you know it's so you know now they're so spoiled with the cgi and the effects and all that kind of stuff is it fun to look back and go really that's how they did it or like i'm, I'm just curious what would I'm sure what would be fun for a 14 year old i'm sure there's an element of that you know th there's uh Part of it is definitely looking at it and going, "Wow, you guys thought this was entertainment back then." <laughs> but then, but then there's also the aspect of I've raised him with a, a deep love of uh, of B movies and bad cinema. I love bad movies. I love schlocky schlocky cinema and TV shows and anything like that. And uh, I've instilled that in him. Plus, of course, he has uh love for godzilla he's a huge godzilla fan and mm. uh things like that are a very easy sell to him and so uh, i think it's a combination of all those things tattooed teenage alien fighters from beverly hills is just sort of at the perfect nexus of all those uh right interests. um my kids are same age 21 and 19 and my 19 year old would probably love your movie festival um because <laughs> she she has a couple girlfriends and like that's one thing they do is they find like just horrible movies like the <laughs> cheesiest silliest stupidest movies and they'll enjoy watching them and you know i'm i'm wondering if having been exposed to my show at a young age sort of planted that <laughs> seed for her to have an appreciation for these things it's nice to know like i'm not alone like there's a lot of you know, former actors in this world who have done a lot of really cheesy, you know, content. And I, I appreciate them so much. <laughs> well, see, we're glad. We're here you've for brought, you. You've brought a lot of happiness to a lot of lives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we not, love it. <laughs> you may not have the mainstream appeal of some, but the people who love, the, who love your stuff love it. That's good. Well, I think it's more like love it to hate it. Although I did. Okay. I came across something once. I was so impressed. I, I should have looked this up. I forgot about it until now. This was a couple years ago. I came across somebody had written like an in-depth review of Tattoo Teens. And I was just amazed. Like, I think this person put more thought into the plot analysis and the, and the, the writing and the, the characters than like we even did while we were in the midst of filming it <laughs> and knew so much and I've just you know part of me was like oh go outside and you know <laughs> look at nature and you know get some you know exposed to more things but part of me was just also really impressed that it was like hey you know it's like you find something that that draws you in and you're like all right well I'm all in. I'm going to analyze this thing. So yep. there are people out there. Oh, and my daughter, a couple of years ago, suddenly I get this text and she's found fan art. So somebody did some fan art of Tattoo Teens and I have some Drew fan art out there somewhere. It's kind of cool. I highly recommend you go to YouTube and you just type in the name of the show. You will find a hundred videos analyzing the show and they, they review usually like the first episode and there's some there's some interesting thoughts out there yeah <laughs> it's, yeah. it's some fun some stuff of it, though like some of it when you're like in it you're like mm. like some of it's impressive and sometimes you're like okay i don't need to read that because you know <laughs> some people some people aren't kind well, well anything else you guys want to know want to ask i think that might cover it we I, I think we've kind of beaten a dead horse we did I tapped out <laughs> <laughs>
I'm <laughs> I'm excited. Would, I'm very happy I, that we got to do this. <laughs> I wish I had some great question that was just going to blow your mind. I even told myself, get a great question and save it for last. And nope, I just Im- like right out Nothing. the gate. Well, just we like wow. fired. You were going to ask what her favorite movie was. <laughs> Well, now we are way off. Uh, the that's that's the name of the game. Off. That's the show. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Sharks Across Hollywood. Seriously, <laughs> if we ever stuck to a subject once in our lives, I think people, our, our two listeners, well, wouldn't know what to think. Well, this has been really fun. I've enjoyed meeting you guys a lot. I had a I had a great time. I'm so glad you agreed to come on the podcast. Thank you so much for doing it. You've been yeah, just a fantastic guest. Uh, I. Honestly, I can't tell you enough how grateful I am and how much I've enjoyed this. I'm going to be fanboying out for the rest of my life, so that, that, that'll that be good. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely telling everybody. <laughs> everybody. I mean, next, at least the next month. Yeah. Everybody I haven't told I anybody to yet, just this. just in case, just in case it was like you, you decided last minute, it's like, never no mind. Show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy you were here. This was awesome. Well, thank you guys very much, and you yes. guys take care. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you, you. Too. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. That was nothing to be nervous about. I had a lot of fun talking with those guys. I'm kind of tired of smiling now. <laughs> you know, when you've had a good time, you smile a lot, and then you're like, oh, man, my cheeks are sore. I hope I was an entertaining guest. If you're a Tattoo Teens fan, thank you for watching. And if you just stuck through it to learn a little more about me, thank you for watching. So that was my walk down memory lane today. And um, it was fun. Andrew and Gabe, Sharks Across Hollywood. That's their podcast. Check it out. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I'm the master reptile.